All right, so here's another way of, uh, we're gonna go over another function and show how to write it uh, in a recursive way, mechanistically starting from the goal of what we want it to do. Um, here is a version of it already written, and we can see that it works. Um, it prints out two one happy new year. So like five, four, three, two, one, happy new year. Um, the way this is written, number is never assigned to in the body of the function, and that's on purpose. That makes it slightly easier to track the way the execution happens. And we have at the very beginning, there's a check to see if number is zero. And if it is, then the whole function stops right here. Otherwise, it keeps going and it does this. So now we're going to look at the actual stack frames as they as execution unfolds. So the initial stack frame is just going to have this call to countdown with the argument two, And I've put these little things to show where in the stack frame execution has paused. Um, so that is just the very initial call here. And I'm going to keep on showing more and more stack frames of like how this whole thing is executed. All right, so first we have the call and then the call gets evaluated. And the way that the call gets evaluated is another stack frame gets added and on top and the new stack frame, uh, you could think of it as having this definition inside of it, but everywhere that number shows up, it's replaced with a two um, in this case. So that would look like this. We have the initial, uh, let me put that at the bottom, close enough. Um, so we have the initial frame and then we have a new frame and everywhere that number showed up, it's now replaced with a two. So in this frame, execution is paused around evaluating this call to countdown. And then in this frame, uh, we are pausing at the part where it's about to call countdown again with the number two minus one. Um, so it skipped over here and it console.logged two. So now uh, the before when it was just this stack frame, we can see the console is empty. And then now that we are paused right here, we, could, we should see that the console has a two in it. It has a two in it right there. And then we will add the stack frame for countdown on the number one. So that's this part right here. And let me again put this at the bottom. Okay, so we have the bottom, the next stack frame with count on, countdown on two, and then the next stack frame with countdown on one. Um, again, this line gets skipped, then we console.log a one, and then we have another call to countdown. So there will be another stack frame, and the console should now have a two from before, uh, just like it used to have, and then also a one. So the console here has a two and then a one. Uh, and now we have, this is the top of the stack. So we got the bottom of the stack, bottom of the stack, next stack frame, countdown two, next stack frame, countdown one, next stack frame, countdown zero. This time, this line, this condition is true. So rather than skipping this line and doing these two lines, the execution does this. And we are paused right now on uh, evaluating console.log with the argument Happy New Year. That's what this shows. Um, and then let's just say that we don't know exactly how it works. We don't have the source code. We probably could go find it. But let's just say that all we need to know about this is that this gets put... Uh, all we need to know about the call to console.log and the insides of it is that Happy New Year gets put into the console. Um, so the console down here used to have a two and a one, and now it has two, one, and happy new year. Um, so then uh, after that has happened, the place where the call to console.log was gets replaced with the return value of console.log in the stack frame with countdown uh, on the number zero. So that's this stack frame here. And so this says return the whatever that is. So in this case, it's undefined. 
and return whatever that is means wherever this function got called, go back there and replace the function call with undefined. So that's here, or no, <laughs> here. Uh, this is gonna get replaced with undefined and this whole stack frame is just gonna go away. Um, and can the whole thing fit on one page? It can. Okay, so we have the bottom stack frame, countdown two, countdown one, countdown zero. Um, this has finished. We're about to return undefined, which means here, this place is gonna get replaced with, or this function call is gonna get replaced with undefined. And uh, that's what that looks like. So we got the bottom stack frame, countdown two, countdown one. We now have, instead of a call to countdown zero, we have undefined. And uh, rather than go through it, I'm just gonna show uh, countdown two, where we used to have countdown one, it's now undefined. And then this whole thing, this uh, initial call gets also replaced with undefined eventually. Okay, so now that we have the execution out of the way, I'm gonna go through how would you come up with this function's definition mechanistically from the goal of being able to print out number, number minus one, number minus two, all the way down to Happy New Year. How would you do that? Um, and this is gonna, to make this a little more generic, um, right now we're working with numbers, but if we were working with an array, then, uh, so with numbers, we wanna start from zero or whatever the simplest case is, it's almost always zero. Sometimes it'll be one. Um, start with zero and write the simplest version of the function that goes from like hard coded for zero, then write another version of the function hard coded for one and all the way up through four. Um, if the input is an array, uh, start with an empty array and then try one, um, that'll be the n equals zero case. Uh, and however many elements are in the array, that's what n is. So uh, an array with one element, an array with two elements, and so on. If it's a string, do an empty string. If it's a number, uh, again, zero through four, or maybe one through five, uh, like f for example, if there's multiplying, if there's multiplication. Okay, um, so here is what I mean by uh, hard code, the, exactly what it would look like for the zero case. So if you were to call countdown with a zero, then the body of the function should just say console.log happy new year. And okay, I wrote that correctly, so it evaluates. Um, if we were to call countdown with a one, it should print a one and then happy new year. So that's exactly what this body shows. Uh, and it works, okay, cool. And then if we were to call it with a two, we should print two, one, zero, happy new year. Um, I keep doing that. Let's evaluate that one and we get two, one, zero. Um, I'll, yeah, it, you'll just have to believe me that the, that, that just executed. Um, again, three, uh, we would print three, two, one, zero, and then happy new year. Okay, cool. So this may seem a little tedious, but it really does help to go a little too far uh, and then scale it back. Um, so like four is maybe a little too far, uh, it might feel like. Um, anyway, so that worked and now we'll scale it back. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite four. So we're gonna rewrite this using the definition for countdown with a uh, three. So okay. can I fit them both? Yes, okay, so here's the definition of three. Uh, here's the definition with four. So another way of writing this would be you could just replace all of this with a call to countdown of three. So that's exactly what that will look like down here. So we have all of that stuff was just replaced with a countdown of three. Um, can I get that all in one? Yes, 
Okay, so we had four, three, two, one, all hard coded. And then now we have console.log four, and then just call countdown of three to do the rest. Um, and then do the same thing for countdown of three. You could write three, then two, then one, then, then happy new year, or you could write three and then just call countdown of two. Um, and then same thing for two, you could write two, then one, then zero, or just call countdown of, so we're in countdown of two right now, and we're calling countdown of one. So countdown of n calls countdown of n minus one. And same thing here. We're going to call countdown of one, and we're going to call, or sorry, in the definition of countdown of one, we are going to call countdown of n minus one. Uh, so one minus one is zero. Um, and then all the way down to zero. Zero, there isn't really, we can't like call some other function. So this ends up being the base case. Um, there's no, there's no breaking this down any further. <laughs> Uh, so that's the base case. Um, so then now we want to write the recursive version of countdown. So the recursive version of countdown should just check. Are we in the base case? If so, then do the base case thing. Um, let me just do that live. Uh, countdown n. Oh no. Uh, I'll just call this countdown on number and we'll say if the number is zero, then we do the base case. Otherwise, we do the whatever was in not the base case. So we print the current number and then we call on n minus one. So let me keep that up there and then I'll go down here. Oh my gosh. So we print the current number, log of number, and then we call countdown of n minus one. And that's uh, the exact same definition that we had before. Um, let me see if I wrote that correctly. So I should be able to call include countdown on n and then call countdown with two, Oops, two. And yep, it worked, cool. Uh, just to be sure, five, four, three, two, one, happy new year. Yay.